moving on our discussion on hypothesis testing, in this video we will focus on test statistics. Hypothesis tests concerning the mean are among the most common in practice. In this video, we will discuss such tests from several distinct types of problems. We will start with evaluating the hypothesis test concerning a single mean. In such cases, we test whether the mean of a single population is equal to or greater than or less than some hypothesized value. For hypothesis tests concerning the population mean of a normally distributed population with known population variance, use of either a z-test or a t-test is acceptable. For hypothesis tests concerning the population mean of a normally distributed population with unknown population variance, the theoretically correct test statistic is the t-statistic. In a vast majority of such problems, the preferred choice of test statistic is the t-test. A t-test is a hypothesis test using a statistic that follows a t-distribution. The t-distribution is a probability distribution defined by a single parameter known as degrees of freedom. Each value of degrees of freedom defines one distribution in the family of distributions. The t-distribution is closely related to the standard normal distribution. Just like the standard normal distribution, a t-distribution is symmetrical with a mean of zero. However, the t-distribution is more spread out, which means that it has a higher standard deviation than one. T-distribution also has more probability for outcomes distant from the mean. That is, it has fatter tails than the standard normal distribution. As the number of degrees of freedom increases with the sample size, the spread decreases and the t-distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. The importance and the popularity of a t-test lies in the fact that the t-test is robust to the moderate departures from normality, except for outliers and strong skewness. When we have large samples, departure of underlying distribution from the normality are increasingly less concerning. The sample mean is approximately normally distributed in larger samples according to the central limit theorem. Hence, if the population sampled has unknown variance and either the sample is large or the sample is small but the population sampled is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed, then the test statistic for hypothesis test concerning a single population mean mu is the t statistic with n minus 1 degrees of freedom where n is the sample size. The t-test statistic is calculated as the sample mean or x-bar minus the hypothesized value of the population mean or mu zero divided by the sample standard error which is equal to the sample standard deviation s divided by the square root of n. Let's look at an example. You are analyzing a mid-cap growth fund that has been in existence for 24 months. During this period, it has achieved a mean monthly return of 1.5% with a sample standard deviation of monthly returns of 3.6%. Given its level of systematic or market risk and according to a pricing model, this mutual fund was expected to have earned 1.1% mean monthly return during that time period. Assuming returns are normally distributed, are actual returns consistent with the underlying or population mean monthly return of 1.1%? So in this problem, the claim we want to test is whether the actual returns of 1.5% are consistent with the theoretical returns of 1.1%. In this case, we don't care if the actual returns are higher or lower than the theoretical returns. All we need to know is if the two returns are statistically different from each other. Hence, this is a two-tailed test and we have a not equal to alternate hypothesis. Assume mu is the underlying mean return on the equity fund, the null hypothesis could be written as mu equals to 1.1% versus the alternative hypothesis which would be mu is not equal to 1.1%. Since the population variance is not known and the sample is small, we use a t-test with n minus 1 or 24 minus 1, 23 degrees of freedom. Now let's find our rejection points or critical values. Because this is a two-tailed test, we divide alpha or level of significance, which for this problem is 10% or 0.1 into two tails. Alpha by 2 is 0.05. We had the rejection points equals to t for 0.05 level of significance with 23 degrees of freedom. In the table for t distribution, we look across the row for 23 degrees of freedom to the 0.05 column to find 1.714. Hence, the two rejection points for the two-tailed tests are 1.714 and negative 1.714. 
This implies that we will reject the null hypothesis or the claim that the actual returns of 1.5% is equal to the theoretical return of 1.1% if we find that the calculated value of t is either greater than 1.714 or less than negative 1.714. Now let's calculate the t test statistic. T value for 23 degrees of freedom is equal to the sample mean of 1.5% minus the value under the null hypothesis of 1.1% divided by the ratio of the standard deviation of 3.6% and the square root of n or 24. This gives us a T value of 0.544. Since the calculated value of T test statistic or 0.544 is neither greater than the rejection point of 1.714 or less than the rejection point of negative 1.714, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Hence, at a 10% level of significance, we conclude that a population mean monthly return of 1.1% is consistent with the 24-month observed data series. Let's look at another example. XYZ, a supplier of clothing to retail chains, is concerned about a possible slowdown in the payment from its customers. The controller's office measures the rate of payment by the average number of days in receivables. XYZ has generally maintained an average of 45 days in receivables. Because it would be too costly to analyze all of the company's receivables frequently, the controller's office uses sampling to track customers' payment rates. A random sample of 50 accounts shows a mean number of days in receivables of 49 with a standard deviation of 8 days. At 5% level of significance, test whether the evidence supports the suspected condition that the customer payment has slowed. The suspected condition is that the number of days in receivables has increased relative to the historical rate of 45 days, which suggests a greater than alternative hypothesis. With mu as the population mean number of days in receivables, the null hypothesis could be written as mu is less than or equal to 45 versus the alternative hypothesis of mu is greater than 45. Because the population variance is not known, we use a t-test with n minus 1 or 50 minus 1 equal to 49 degrees of freedom. The rejection point is found across the row for degrees of freedom of 49 to find the one-tailed rejection point for a 0.05 significance level, we use the 0.05 column. The value is 1.677. Hence, we reject the null if we find that the t is greater than 1.677. Now let's calculate the t-test statistic. T value for 49 degrees of freedom equal to the sample mean of 49 minus the value under the null hypothesis of 45 divided by the ratio of the standard deviation of 8 and the square root of n. This gives us a T value of 3.536 which is greater than the rejection point of 1.677. Hence we reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level of significance. Based on the findings, we can conclude that the XYZ has experienced a slowdown in the customer payments. In the next video, we will discuss the t-test concerning the differences between the two sample means.